Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will dive into the world of Ansible. So today we will be looking at top 15 interview questions that you can expect as part of your Ansible. So these interview questions will help you to master your Ansible and ace uh, those interview. So whether you're a seasoned pro or you're just starting your Ansible journey, stay tuned for some valuable insights. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question we have is what is Ansible and what problem does it solve? So Ansible, that's your open source automation platform that you have. So this is one of your configuration management tool that you have in the market and this is completely open source. So we can use this for configuration management. We can use it for deploying our application and we can also use it for automating any of your tasks. That is where we can make use of your Ansible. So mainly it's a uh, configuration management tool. So if you are dealing with lots of machines and uh, you want to manage the configuration of these machines, we can make use of your Ansible for that. It also helps you to simplify any of your uh, complex tasks by automating your repetitive tasks. So any work that you're doing repetitive uh, repetitively manually you can automate that by making use of your Ansible and this allows for faster and more efficient operation so you, know, you can spend time on other uh, tasks which you can maybe automate so you know the the work would be much faster and also the efficient will be much better the next question we have is explain the difference between Ansible and other configuration management tools like puppet and chef so when we talk about your configuration management tools Puppet and Chef are other uh, tools that we have. So the main difference that we have between Ansible and Puppet and Chef is that Ansible is completely agentless. So we don't have to install any client or any agent on the managed node. So even if you have thousands of machines, no agents are required. Whereas with your Puppet and Chef, you will need to install agent uh, on your managed node. So it is completely agent based. So if you have thousand machines, you will need to install the agent on all these thousand machines. The next difference we have is Ansible uses YAML um, uh, syntax to write your playbook, uh, the script, whereas your chef and puppet makes use of your domain specific languages. So the major difference you have is Ansible is completely agentless, whereas your chef and puppet are agent based, you will need to install the agent on all of your managed nodes. The next question we have is what is an Ansible playbook? So Ansible playbook is simply your script. So Ansible playbook is a way for us to pass the instructions to your Ansible, which can be used to execute on your managed node. So this is a YAML file where we will be defining your set of tasks, which is nothing but the instructions that you want to execute on your managed nodes. Okay. So playbooks allow the users to automate your complex tasks, which can be your configuration management, deployment of your application, and also your system orchestration, all of this in a declarative manner. So it could be managing the configurations, it could be deploying the applications, all of these instructions, we can write it in a YAML uh, file, which is your script, and that script, we call it as your Ansible playbook. Moving on to the next question, how do you define inventory in Ansible? Now, your Ansible will manage your uh, remote machines, but we need to provide the information about these remote machines. And this is where inventory comes into the picture. So inventory is simply a list of your managed nodes or the servers, which can be organized into groups. Okay, so it's basically the information about your managed node. So uh, this information, we define it in a static file. Generally, it is an inventory.ini file or it can be generated dynamically by using scripts or cloud providers api so this is this this inventory file is basically where we store the information about your managed nodes so inventory file will specify either the host name or the ip addresses and group them based on attributes like your environment role and function so mostly it will contain either the host name of your managed nodes or the ip addresses of your managed so basically information about all the managed nodes will be stored in your inventory file the next question we have is explain the concept of idempotence in ansible so idempotence in ansible means simply running a task multiple times but it has the same effect 
as running it once. So let's say for example, uh, uh, capturing the date and time of your managed node. So even if you run multiple times, the results would still be the same as if you're running it once. So this behavior, we call it as your idempotence. So Ansible ensures idempotence by checking the current state of the system against the desired state in playbooks and executing only the necessary actions to reach that state. So instead of executing the task again and again and again, it will check on the managed nodes, the current state versus the desired state. And if they are matching, Ansible will not execute those uh, tasks. It will only execute the necessary task. It will only take the necessary actions for us. The next question we have is what are Ansible roles and how do you use them? So at any time, if you want to reduce the complexity of your playbooks or if you want to make your playbooks reusable, we make use of your Ansible roles. So Ansible roles, it's a way for us to organize our playbooks or your tasks into reusable units. So at any point, if you're talking about making your playbooks reusable, we are talking about your Ansible roles. So they provide a structured approach to managing complex configurations and deployments by encapsulating related tasks, variables, and files in a single directory structure. So with your Ansible roles, there is a directory structure that it follows and it is constant. So we'll have a directory for your task, we'll have a directory for your variables, and then so on. And that way it reduces the complexity of your playbooks and also makes your uh, directory reusable in other roles as well. So roles can be reused across different projects. Okay. The next question we have is explain the difference between Ansible ad hoc commands and playbook. So there are two ways that we can work with your Ansible. One is running the ad hoc commands. The other is by running your playbooks. So ad hoc commands, these are generally your one-off commands. These are um, executing simple tasks which uh, need not be repeated. So, you know, it's a one-time task. You're not going to run it again and again and again. Those kind of tasks can be executed as ad hoc commands. So this is executing the task on your managed nodes without writing a script. So we can just execute these instructions from the command line and it's a one-off command, right? Playbooks, on the other hand, uh, can be used when you have a repetitive task, a particular task that needs to be executed multiple times. We can make use of your playbooks for that. So these are generally your YAML files, which will have your set of tasks, which are organized into plays and then can be executed in a structured and repeatable manner. So whenever you have a task that needs to be repeated, it needs to be executed multiple times. We'll make use of your playbooks. And if it is a one-off commands, we make use of your ad hoc commands. Moving on to the next question, how do you handle sensitive data like passwords in Ansible? So whenever we talk about your sensitive data, Ansible by default has an option called Ansible vaults, which can be used to uh, store your sensitive data. So this will encrypt the data. So the data will not be available in the uh, plain text. You have some other options also available, like we can make use of your environment variables or using external vault like HashiCorp vault to store your uh, sensitive data. So Ansible provides you several methods for handling your uh, sensitive data. So instead of keeping it in plain text, we can encrypt those uh, sensitive information. So Ansible vault is one option, environment variables, and then HashiCorp vault. These are some of the methods that your Ansible provides. Moving on to the next question, explain the purpose of Ansible Galaxy. So Ansible Galaxy, it's a hub which can be used to find, share and reuse your Ansible content, which can be your roles, playbooks and uh, collections. So it's you can think of it as a community where we maintain roles, playbooks and uh, collections. And then these can be reused uh, by other uh, people. So these are generally your you, you can think of it as a centralized repository which we, which is which maintains your community content so it's a community contributed content making it easier for users to bootstrap their automation projects and leverage best practices that's where we can make use of your ansible galaxy moving on to the next question what is ansible tower and how does it enhance ansible's capabilities so ansible it provides us two versions one is ansible cli and the other version is an Ansible Tower, which is a web-based uh, tool. 
Okay, so it's a web, it provides us with a web based interface uh, that we can use for our automation platform. And this is built on top of your Ansible itself. So uh, the same thing that we do using the CLI, we can achieve by making use of your Ansible tower. The only difference is that it's a web, uh, web based interface. We can see a, a, a nice dashboard, a nice interface that we can use to interact with your Ansible. So this provides us with a lot of features like you get the role based access control to control the access. You can schedule your jobs. You can uh, centralize your logging mechanism and also you can create graphical dashboards for managing your Ansible automation at scale. So that's where Ansible tower can be useful. And also this can be used to remove the dependencies on your automation engineers or your devops engineer so as a devops engineer we can write the playbooks configure it in ansible tower and then anyone who has access can trigger those playbooks without depending on the devops engineers to execute them the next question we have is how do you debug ansible playbooks and uh, tasks so ansible provides us with some uh, debugging techniques that we can use to uh, debug our playbooks and tasks so one of the options we have is your verbose mode which is basically passing the hyphen vvv flag now what this will do is this will dis display a detailed output about the playbook or the task that we are um, uh, executing so using this debug module we can print the variable values and also we can run the playbooks by making use of this hyphen hyphen check flag which can be used to perform dry runs without making any changes on the managed node so if you want to check if your what exactly your playbook will do or what changes your playbook will introduce without executing them on the remote machines we can make use of your hyphen hyphen check flag so these are some of the mechanism that your ansible provides which can be used to debug your playbook and your tasks moving on to the next question explain the concept of ansible facts now ansible facts are simply your information about your managed nodes okay so these informations are collected by ansible when the managed nodes are uh, connected to the ansible machine all right so all this information will be connected will be collected by your ansible and we call this information as your ansible flag facts now what information does it maintain so it includes details like what operating system uh, we are running on the managed node what is the ip address of the managed nodes or the hardware information the custom facts defined by the users all these information will be collected by your ansible machine and we call this information as your ansible facts now where can we use them we can use them inside your playbooks to make decisions your runtime decisions based on the state of your managed node so maybe you have certain tasks which runs on a specific operating system or you want to execute them on certain ip addresses or certain hardware we can make use of your ansible facts for that moving on to the next question how do you handle error handling and recovery in ansible playbooks again ansible provides several techniques or mechanisms for handling your error um, handling so we have options like ignore errors failed when and block statements which can be used to handle our errors gracefully in the uh, playbook so ignore errors can be used when you know that there will be certain errors and you want to ignore them failed when can be used to validate if there is a failure fail the task likewise there are different different mechanisms that are available for us so tasks can be configured to continue execution even if they encounter errors and error handlers can be defined to perform recovery action. So that's basically how we can handle the error handling in your Ansible. Moving on to the next question, what is Ansible Tower's role based access control or RBAC feature and why is it important? So whenever we talk about your Ansible Tower, we can control the access to the Ansible Tower by making use of your RBAC, which stands for role based access control. So using this feature as an admin, we can define granular permissions for different different teams and users so you can give access to other teams other users and you can define granular permissions for this um, users and teams and you can define based on their roles and responsibilities okay so rbac ensures that only authorized users can perform certain actions within the ansible tower interface and this mainly helps in enhancing your security and the governance of your ansible automation so if you want to have sort of control 
over the authorization and the roles and responsibilities we can make use of your RBAC for that and this is uh, applicable only in your Ansible tower the web based uh, version of your Ansible. Moving on to the next question explain how you can integrate Ansible with other tools and technologies. So Ansible provides integration with other tools so we can integrate uh, we can implement ansible integration by making use of plugins apis and webhook integrations so we can integrate ansible with version control tools like git continuous integration platforms like jenkins uh, cloud providers apis and monitoring and logging solutions like prometheus and elk stack so ansible has integration for all these platforms and we can integrate your ansible so that the the power of your ansible is much better automations are uh, much better for us so that brings us to the end of our ansible interview questions and answer i hope you found this video helpful and uh, uh, hope these questions help you in your ansible uh, interview if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and hit the, hit the bell icon for more content Share your thoughts or any specific topics you'd like me to cover in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.